Hi guys, so now let's talk about Slutsky decomposition. Um, so um, before doing this, um, uh, well, what's the purpose? Well, why are, what are we trying to do? We are trying to separate the income effect and the substitution effect when, when the price of a good changes, all right? So consider an environment, the simplest environment, uh, where we have two goods, X and Y, um, and suppose that everything is fixed except the price of good X. So we change, uh, decrease the price of good X. The decrease in the price of good X is gonna shift the budget curve. And then because of this shift, the, the, the demand will also change. Um, it will normally uh, increase, right? If, if it is a, a superior good. So because the price is now lower. Well, the thing is there are two reasons for this. One is what we call a substitution effect. Now the good, is, good X is, is cheaper relative to the other goods because the other goods prices are fixed. So because now this good is, is relatively cheaper, uh, some consumers or our consumer may actually want to substitute and instead of buying more Y, he may prefer to buy more X, all right? Because it's relatively cheaper, okay? <clears throat> So that's, I mean, think of this as like uh, the, 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 the Samsung is, is providing a very good uh, cell phone and then it's, it's like the half the price of iPhone. All right, so, uh, or, or the new, new iPhone, new, new Samsung is basically cutting the price. And so what's gonna happen, you know, maybe more iPhone buyers are going to start buying the, this, this Samsung uh, uh, phone. Uh, because it's relatively cheaper. Um, so that's the substitution effect. And then there's gonna be another effect, which is an income effect. So what does that mean? That means now, because the price of good X is lower, uh, you can actually afford the, the initial bundle and you can save some money, right? Um, because you know the initial bundle is now less costly because thanks to the uh, decline in the price of good X. But the thing is, in this environment, you, your utility function is increasing and saving money has no point. So you want to spend your entire income I. So for that reason, you, this, this additional income, uh, the, this, this uh, sort of generated thanks to the decline in the price of good X, you're gonna distribute this additional income between X and Y once again. And so uh, the X is going to increase uh, because of this extra uh, uh, the income that you, 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 you have. And so this is what we call the income effect. So the question is formally and mathematically how we can uh, sort of uh, distinguish these two. And, you know, once I have a price, say like 10% price decline, you know, 15% increase in demand, how much of this is due to the uh, income effect? How much of this is due to the price effect? So how can we figure this out? There are two ways, uh, Slutsky decomposition, that I'm going to explain it in this episode. And the other one is the Hicksian decomposition. I'll hopefully do it in the next episode. So let me first give you the formal theory and then I'm going to do uh, an example to uh, basically help you visualize what's going on. So our starting point, as I said, good X and Y, well, we use two good scenario because it's easier to visualize on graph, but you know, all our arguments are gonna work when we have more than two goods. So this is the budget line where this is income divided by PX, income divided by PY, and then obviously we have some indifference curve. So let's suppose this is the optimal point. Um, uh, I, I, I care about the change in good X because I'm going to change the price of good X. So the price of good X is decreases I over PX prime. All right. And obviously the new optimal, uh, they should be tangent. I'm sorry. Imagine they are tangent. So X prime is also, uh, so th th this is the new demand. So let's call this X initial X final. All right. So this is the total effect. So X final minus X initial, we call this total effect. Okay, so what is the idea? The idea is the following. Look, um, the new price ratio, all right, PX prime over PY, right? This is the slope, 
which is minus px prime divided by py. But the slope of this budget line is minus px over py and px prime is less than px. So therefore this slope is, is, is in the magnitude, uh, the, the magnitude of the slope is lo uh, lower and so it's more horizontal. Okay, but what if we keep this price ratio when, uh, you know, to buy this bundle? You see what I mean? Um, meaning, suppose that I want to buy this initial bundle with the new price uh, of good X. Okay, that's the idea. Um, so that means I have to draw a budget line. Okay, uh, so maybe I should make it bolder sort of to help you understand that this is a different budget line. So I draw a new budget line, which is passing through this initial uh, allocation. Why is that? As I said, my purpose is um, how much income do I need to buy XI and obviously YI, the initial bundle, at price vector PX prime and PY. So under the new prices, how much does it cost for me to buy my initial bundle? So this is XI, this is YI, all right? Well, this clearly is going to cost, well, it is basically PX prime XI plus PY uh, YI, right? So let's call this, uh, you know, uh, income, but real income sort of, all right? So that's my purchasing power. All right, well, this is going to be less than uh, the amount of money I originally had. Why is that? Well, because if you remember, um, this under the higher prices, Px, Px times Xi plus Py, so Px times Xi plus Py times Yi was equal to income, right? Because it's on my original budget line. All right, so I am decreasing this price. So I'm multiplying Xi with a lower price. So therefore this part is gonna be lower than income. All right, so that's the idea. Uh, so once I have <clears throat> this new income, all right, would I still buy the initial uh, bundles? All right, so once I keep my real income, all right, or purchasing power, uh, let's let's put it that way. If I if I keep my purchasing power the same, would I still buy X I Y I? The answer is probably no, because uh, the the slope of the budget line has changed. And in fact, the budget line has entirely changed. So therefore, the new optimal point, let's suppose, would be this point. X, uh, M, let's say. All right, so X, M, and obviously Y, M. But I don't care about Y, M. So X, M is the optimal solution when the real income is uh, Px prime Xi plus Py Yi. Under the prices, Px prime and Py. All right, so once again, the idea is the following. If I consider the same price for good Y and the lower price for good X, Px prime, uh, my initial choice would be totally different, right? What would be my initial choice? If I keep my purchasing power the same, meaning uh, I don't spend too much money, all my money, I just spend you know, enough of money that I would normally buy my original bundle. So therefore my original bundle would still be a candidate for an optimal allocation, but it will probably not be optimal. All right, so the optimal allocation will probably be different. So let's call it XM, at least for the good X. Good Y, YM, but I'm not going to care about it. So therefore I said, hey, 
if, if xm minus xi is non-zero, meaning they're different, I mean I choose a different optimal point, that actually means I prefer to substitute, right? My purchasing power is the same. My purchasing power to buy this and this are the same, but I prefer a new point. That, that should be because the price is lower in comparison to this to that, all right? So therefore, from jumping from here to here, Sometimes it's going to be positive, sometimes it's going to be negative. But because I jump from this choice to this choice, that should be purely because of substitution effect. All right, so we call this substitution effect. All right, once again, I mean, I know you can rewind and then uh, listen again, but I may uh, explain it better if I try it for the second time. So let me try again. Um, I, I found both xi and xm uh, from the optimization problem, utility maximization subject to, subject to budget constraint. And what is fixed under these two can, uh, scenario are the price of good y and the purchasing power. The only difference between these two points is the price of good x. Here, I found this as an optimal because the price of good x was px. Here I found this because the price of good x was px prime, lower. So therefore, if my optimal point, initial optimal point, is not my new optimal point, if they're different, that means this change must be due to the substitution effect. Because the price has changed, I, I am changing, uh, I am buying more x. And because the purchasing power is the same, that should be coming from, uh, instead of buying uh, more Y, I actually prefer buying more X and less Y. And so I substitute some of my Ys with X. So this difference is what we call the substitution effect. Well, what about the rest, meaning X final minus XM? Well, remember my purchasing power, this one, this is not my entire money. I actually have more money. All right, so I can spend this more money. Obviously, I don't have to spend this additional money. I mean, I minus IR on good Y or on good X only. Uh, so I'm going to do a re-optimization. But the thing is, as a result of this re-optimization, I'm going to end up X final. So therefore, the jump from X final to XM, if there is any jump, the jump from here to here must be purely due to income effect. Income effect. All right, so that's it. Uh, what we basically do, therefore, uh, we solve the initial optimization problem, uh, optimization problem number one, we solve the final optimization problem, optimization number two, and then we solve a sort of intermediary optimization problem where the only difference is that the we, we use the purchasing power and then we use the new set of prices. And then as a result of this, I'm going to find three different levels. I mean, they don't have to be different, but possibly three different levels for X. And then look at the differences between these two and calculate the substitution effect and income effect. Obviously, the total effect, the total effect is equal to substitution effect plus income effect, right? And uh, we will see sometimes, you know, the substitution effect is positive, income effect is negative, so therefore the total effect may be less than the substitution effect, or they both may be positive, they both may be negative, etc., etc. In the given good scenario, the income effect is going to be highly negative, meaning uh, the substitution effect is going to push X on this direction, but the income effect is going to push it back, and, and, and because the good is highly inferior, meaning the, uh, the richer you get, uh, the less you're going to consume, the total change is going to be, the total effect, I mean, is going to be negative. You see what I mean? So the substitution effect is going to be positive, in income effect is going to be negative, and so the, in the given good environment, the income effect is so big that the total effect is going to be negative. All right, so I, as I said, I'm going to solve a numerical example, but because I already finished uh, like 15 minutes, let's do it in the next uh, video, okay? Uh, see you then.